The next experiment is the four pop experiment. For measuring the resistivity of very low to high resistive samples at different temperature. The objectives of this experiment is to measure the resistivity of thin films by four pop method. Measurement of resistivity of uh, silicon chip by four pop method and determination of band gap of a semiconductor by four pop method. Now what is electrical resistivity? So electrical resistivity is the fundamental property of a sample that how strongly it resists the electric current in that sample in that material. So for a low resistive material the electron don't, uh, do not get resisted and uh, we get a high current, high, conduct, high conducting. And if the resistivity is uh, very high, then the current is blocked. And uh, it uh, it's being uh, insulated. So in band theory, there is a valence band and there is a conduction band. So when the uh, carrier is in conducting, that means the, uh, the carriers are in the conduction band. In the conduction band, the carriers are in conducting state. Okay. So uh, when the conduct, uh, carriers are promoted to the conduction band from the valence band then only the carriers uh, will participate in conducting so the energy which is required to for this promotion from balance band to conduction band the minimum energy is called the band gap so it is basically the energy gap between the upper portion of the valence band and the lower portion of the conduction band. So for uh, low resistive material, that is for the metal or, or the conductor, this energy gap is almost negligible. That means the valence band and conduction band, they are overlapping each other. And for uh, insulator, that is for the high resistive, very high resistive material, this band gap is very high and in between there is a, some materials called semiconductor which has a band gap energy and that can be imposed for the valence band for the valence band carriers to promote it to the to be promoted to the uh, conduction band and make the carriers conducting so for low resistive material the conducting uh, it is called the conductors and their band gap is very low and for high resistive materials their band gap is very high uh, and it is called insulator and in between for semiconductor the resistivity is moderate and also the band gap now we know the resistance in a conducting wire it is proportional to uh, the length and the and it is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area okay so we can say that capital r that is the resistance of that specimen equal to rho l over a where rho is the proportionality constant here rho is the resistive resistivity of that specimen okay so rho uh, is basically r the resistance multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the specimen over the length of the uh, specimen so uh, now move to the four probe setup so four probe setup or four point probe is a that consists of four electrical probes which is collinear 
and the uh, spacing of the probes is actually equal and the outer probes will carry the current and will will get the voltage will get the voltage between the two uh, middle two probes that is the inner probes so here uh, it is numbered as 1 2 3 4 so the current will will flow between 1 and 4 and between 2 and 3 voltage will be dropped so what is the benefit of the of this arrangement so we'll get the accuracy with this arrangement rather than the two probe system okay how to uh, by eliminating the contact resistance and the wire resistance so you can see that uh, here the contact resistance is rc1 rc2 rc3 and rc4 is uh, pointed uh, in this picture and the wire resistance is marked as RW1, RW2, RW3, RW4 for the uh, probe 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. Okay. Then from uh, RC4, uh, from uh, uh, current is flowing from phone probe number 4 to probe number 1 and the voltage drop delta V is basically to measure the voltage drop delta V only the sample resistance only the sample resistance that is R, RS1, RS2 and RS3 uh, comes into play and uh, we can neglect the resistances RC1, RC2, RC3 and RC4 that is the contact resistance so between uh, problem number 1 and 4 some direct current sources is there and between the inner probes that is uh, probe number two and three a potentiometer is attached to measure the value of the voltage drop but there are some assumptions for these experiments the assumptions are the resistivity of the material should be uniform throughout the area of the sample okay and uh, the measurement should be made on the surface which has a, a very high uh, recombination rate so that when a uh, minority carriers injections injected into the surfaces then most of the carriers uh, recombine near the electrodes so their con their contribution to the conductivity will be negligible the four probe should be equally spaced and uh, the surface of, of the probes should be flat okay and the sample should be semi-infinite so semi-infinite means the thickness of the sample should be very large compared to the probe spacing and the diameters that is the lateral dimensions it also should be the uh, it also should be the large compared to the probe spacing and the probes should be collinear the diameter of contact between the metallic probes and the semiconductor should be small compared to the distance between the probes the spacing between the probes so that the contact the contact can be minimized The surface of the material the surface of the uh, boundary rather it should be it can be sorry it can be either conducting or non-conducting okay so depending on this the correction factor we will use for the 
मेजरमेंट ऑफ रेजिस्टिविटी नाउ मूव टू द रेजिस्टिविटी मेजरमेंट ऑन ए लार्ज सैंपल एंड हाउ टू हाउ टू कैलकुलेट इट सो द फ्लोटिंग पोटेंशियल वी एफ एट अ डिस्टेंस आर फ्रॉम द इलेक्ट्रोड which carries current i and if the uh, resistivity of the material is rho 0 then vf is, uh, would be rho 0 i by 2 pi r so here the floating potential at any point in the specimen is basically the difference between the potential that is induced by the by the electrodes okay and uh, the current since the current uh, is equal in magnitude and the direction is opposite thus for probe number 1 and probe number 4 uh, the floating potential vf can be written as rho 0 i by 2 pi and in place of r1 the distance is uh, let as let assume from uh, probe number 1 it is r1 and from probe number 4 it is r4 so uh, we can say uh, that the difference vf would be rho 0 i by 2 pi into uh, 1 over r1 minus 1 over r4 that is the difference between the potential uh, potential at uh, any point due to the probe number 1 and due to the probe number 4 so now the floating potential at probe, probe number 2 would be vf2 that that will be rho 0 i by 2 pi into 1 over s1 minus 1 over s s2 plus s3 why because here r1 is s1 so from probe number 1 the distance is s1 it is uh, r1 and the distance between uh, distance be is s2 plus s3 from probe number 2 to probe number 4 so at the point at the point of probe number 2 so it is basically here the point y it was uh, as described in the previous equation right so the distance between the probe number 1 to that point y that is uh, at uh, probe number 2 it is s1 and the distance between probe number 2 and probe number 4 it is s2 plus s3 so in place of r1 we write s1 and in place of r4 we write s2 plus s3 okay likewise at probe number 3 the this potential floating potential would be rho 0 i by 2 pi so in place of r1 the distance between the probe number 1 and probe number 3 would be now s1 plus s2 and the distance between probe number 2 and probe number 4 would be s3 so in place of r1 we'll write s1 plus s2 and is in place of r4 we'll write s3 at uh, while calculating the floating potential at probe number 3 right so the differences the differences would be now rho 0 i by 2 pi 1 over s1 minus 1 over s2 plus s3 minus 1 over s1 plus s2 plus 1 over s3 now we have already discussed that uh, that probe difference the distance between two uh, between the probes that must be equal so for equally spaced probes s1 and s2 and s3 that will be same and uh, let let it be s and now the simplification after simplification of the uh, equation by uh, by putting s1 is equal to s2 plus s uh, is equal to s3 is equal to s so we get rho 0 is equal to v over i into 2 pi s so that is the formula we will use to measure the uh, resistivity of that samples now after getting the values uh, rho 0 by calculating the uh by the by the equation we have already discussed uh that is rho 0 is equal to v over i into 2 pi s but it is not the correct value actually some corrections to be uh, incorporated with these values 
Why? Because we have as we have assumed some things while performing the experiment. And uh, one of the assumptions was it should be the material should be semi-finite, in semi-infinite. That is the thickness of the sample should be large compared to the spacing of the probes and the lateral dimensions is al also should be large compared to the probe spacing okay but here we will use the thin one right so some geometrical corrections to be incorporated and how to incorporate so for uh, it, it will depend whether the boundary uh, the lower boundary is conducting or non-conducting so for conducting boundary it should be there there is some functions g6 which is a function basically uh, g6 is a function of w by s where w uh, is the thickness of the sample and s is the uh, probe spacing then g uh, g6 is defined as 1 plus 4 s over w summation n is equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n 1 by root over s by w square plus 2n square minus 1 by root over 2s by w square plus 2n whole square. So that function should be incorporated uh, with the measured value. But here we will use the uh, boundary as non-conducting. So while calculating, while correcting the values of the uh, resistivity, we will use G7 for our experiments. So G7 is also a function of uh, W by S, which is slightly different from G6. So for a set of value of W by S, we can plot G7 as a function of W by S. And for a particular value, for, for the values of uh, in the, uh, in, in our experiments, we have a particular set of value of W by S, then we will put the value of W by S and we will we'll find for that, that particular value, we'll, we can find the function. Okay. So we have to basically calibrate the function with, with W by S. And from the, from the calibration, we can get the value G, uh, G7 for our set of samples. And set, uh, and set up the four probe set uh, experiments. Now, if the value of W by S is less than 0 0.25, or we can say the sample, if the, the sample thickness is up to 0.5 millimeter, then we can we can simplify the summation and neglecting the higher terms. Uh, G7 can be can be used. We can use G, G7 as 2s by W into log 2, log base e 2. Okay. So after getting the values rho 0 by calculating by the calculating uh, rho 0 as v over i into 2 pi s after getting the values of volt, set of voltage and currents then we will divide it uh, divide the value with the j7 and we will get the corrected resistivity uh, here is the experimental arrangement of the four probe setup and how it is connected it is uh, uh, described in this picture so we have the four probe setup and it is connected with the PID controller and the oven is connected with this controller and the outer probes is connected with the current sources, constant current sources. So we have two current sources here. One is constant current source and one is low current source. So for if we want to use the low values of current then we will choose the low current source where uh, it can be varied from 2 microampere to 2 milliampere and the current source constant current source 
it has variations up to 200 milliampere so either of either of the current source will use uh, depending on the samples and uh, the the inner part inner probes the inner probes is connected with the digital micro voltmeter so the range in the micro voltmeter is from 1 millivolt to 10 volt and if we get if you want uh, if you are willing to get the values of the resistivity of the samples of the specimen uh, for uh, different temperatures then we'll we'll put the setup we'll put the whole set set of four probes into the oven and we can choose either of the ovens so there are two options in the oven one is uh, up to 200 temperature degree celsius temperature and the other is oven 600 that is the upper uh, part of the temperature it can be varied up to 600 degree centigrade so by the oven selector we have to choose either of one so we'll choose here in this experiment uh, in in our lab uh, we'll choose oven 200 that is we'll uh, see the values of the uh, resistivity up to 200 degree centigrade for calculating the band gap of the semiconductor okay so uh, this is the things for uh, four prop setup and we will we'll demonstrate each of the uh, current sources and the voltage uh, digital voltmeter and the whole setup and how to execute the experiments in the live demonstration thank you